Hope you're having a good day today. It is April 9th. Our reading today comes from the book of 1 Samuel. We started looking in 1 Samuel chapter 1 in yesterday's study, but today we're going to be looking, as of course you have the account of Samuel uh, being born, and then this this is also in the uh, context of the Ark of the Lord being taken, Eli. We mentioned Eli yesterday, I believe. But anyway, here in 1 Samuel chapter 1, to kind of skim over it a little bit, you have the birth of Samuel. But we have Hannah, Elkanah, the rival, Eli, being presumptuous, assuming that she was drunk as she prayed. Of course, Samuel being born, Samuel being dedicated to the Lord, as Hannah had promised. Chapter 2 now. You have Hannah's prayer as she rejoices in the Lord. Then you have Eli's worthless sons. They were corrupt. They didn't know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people and what they were doing. And they were actually causing the people to, verse 17, to abhor the offering of the Lord. Just absolutely despicable what they were doing. And they were causing people to hate worship. But Samuel, in contrast, ministered before the Lord. So, there is Eli would bless Elkanah. Eli would recognize Elkanah. But the Lord's going to hold Eli responsible for his son. So, Eli does rebuke his sons. And we'll have to explain this a little bit. Because Eli says to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. Know, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You You make the Lord's people transgress. And that's what they were doing. So the Lord rejects Eli's household. This is the account where the Lord speaks to Samuel. And the Lord's, con- the Lord's going to condemn them. So, as the- and that's chapter 3, pardon me. That's chapter 3 as the Lord reiterates what he's going to do. And the Lord's speaking to Samuel. Verse 12. In that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken against, spoken concerning his household, uh, spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. He says what he's going to do, and yet he did not restrain his sons. So what could he have done? That's really the question. Sometimes children get out on their own. You know, they're adults, like Eli's kids. And they're, they're adults, and people think, well, I don't have any control over them. All I know is the Lord held Eli responsible. And so what could Eli have done? Well, we're in the Old Testament, so I suppose one option is Eli could have killed them. And, and I don't mean that flippantly, but that's what were you supposed to do with rebellious children? What were you supposed to do with those who, were rebe- who rebelled against God, period? And that's what these that's what Eli's sons were doing. And Eli is high priest. And so this is this is your watch, fella. And he needed to handle it. He should have handled it. Short of that, though, short of killing those sons, and the Lord is going to take care of that fairly quickly, he could have condemned them publicly. And I know he rebukes them, but I wonder if he rebuked them publicly. And I wonder if he called attention, and it doesn't look like he did. Whatever whatever it is, when the Lord said he did not restrain them, that has to mean something. That has to be that has to mean something more than Eli did. Because it says he rebuked them, and yet the Lord said he did not restrain them. So he should have restrained them somehow. And so he could have condemned them publicly and said, they are not my kids. They are dead to me. I have nothing to do with them. And then he could have, and the third thing on my list is, he could have removed them from their positions. It's like, you are not going to serve as priests. And you can tell they are still serving because as the the ark is taken, because they go to war, they go to war and they call for the ark. And who is it who goes with the ark? It's the priests. It's Eli's sons. 
They, they had no business serving in that position. They were causing people to hate worship. They should have been removed. And the person who was ultimately held responsible for their removal was their father, the high priest, Eli. When Eli hears the news, of course, that's the account where he falls, falls over, breaks his neck, and he's dead. But that's what he, that's what he could have done. Why, why wasn't he doing it? Why, the, the people. And to think about applications. The, these were priests. And I think sometimes people think, well, you know, they're our leaders, so we got to support them. We got we to gotta get behind them, and we have to, we have to do what we can. Now, to some degree, for example, Samuel, Samuel served the Lord, and that's what people have to understand. We serve the Lord, first and foremost. So when we think about who, who we are support, we, we are supporting the Lord. We, li we lift up the Lord. And if someone is not on board with that, if someone's not following the Lord, if someone's not obeying the Lord, if someone's actually causing people to, to sin, if someone's actually doing that, the worst thing we can do is support them. Why would we support them in their sin? That's not godly. That's enabling sin is what that is. And God holds Eli responsible. And all of the people are going to suffer and already have been suffering because of it. And so we have to make applications ourselves as fathers, with our children, also in the church. We have to make applications. Appreciate you. Hope the study's been beneficial for you. Hope you have a good day. Hope you join us for our next look into God's Word.